train to the Plastic Underground. Approaching the station, please stand away from the platform head. underground this week I have uh, kind of a quick easy fun build for you guys uh, I've been watching Jacob Forrester play the uh, DLC for Five Nights at Freddy's uh, Ruin DLC and um, there's like a main thing in the game I haven't made anything from Five Nights at Freddy's it's not like a game I play but I enjoy watching other people play it so uh, I made the uh, the Fez wrench and it was kind of it's kind of a little cool little design and uh, I like the way that, like, you as a character have to, uh, like, put this in the uh, circuit breaker and, like, turn it. And uh, it just looks fun. It's bright. It's got this cool design on it. And uh, it's kind of fun to make. And I literally did it in a couple hours, like, with sealing and painting. Probably you could do this, like, on a Saturday. And uh, I have all the blueprints for you guys. And I'm going to show you how I made it. All right, you guys, so here is the uh, template that I made so that you can download it from my Facebook page and make your own Faz wrench. The uh, first thing I do here, obviously, is I cut the template out and then I am tracing it onto some 10 millimeter floor mat foam and to make sure to trace both sides because you're gonna need two pieces of floor mat foam for this. And then um, after I trace it, this is the part where your hand goes. And I cut that out. And uh, then using the uh, foam that was cut out, I will use that to make the actual like um, trigger part. I don't know exactly what it does, but uh, looks like a little like handle. So I uh, cut that out of the template, and then I just go through and I, I cut that piece out too. And we'll add a little bit of 5mm uh, to the back of this just to thicken it up a little bit later. Uh, then I go ahead and cut the screen out. And then I line my template up with the handle just to make sure everything is square. Then I go ahead and mark the screen and then using my smaller blade and my metal ruler I go through and I cut some straight lines and try to uh, try to get this cut uh, in two passes so it's not all like jagged so there you go now the screen's out and uh, after I cut the screen out I put it on top of some five millimeter foam and laid my blade sideways and used that as a guide to basically cut uh, a little bit off of that screen so that when you glue it in it sits uh, recessed. Using a little bit of a coarse sandpaper I sand the back of this texture. Um, this texture if you glue without sanding it is uh, so like glossy and shiny that um, it doesn't stick great it'll it has a tendency to peel peel right off so sand that first make sure your glue s soaks into the foam and then you uh, glue that those two layers together uh, you can see I didn't cut the handle part out of the back piece of foam I wanted to make sure that it was lined up first and then uh, I cut it out evenly so there you go, there's some 5mm foam added to that handle part. And then I just uh, trim that up, make sure that is all cut away. Um, and uh, then I go through and I cut that back piece of the handle out. 
So now using a little bit of super glue on the screen part, I go ahead and uh, glue that screen into place. All right, so I take this uh, couple scrap pieces of foam here and glue these together. I glue this uh, textured side out because I'm going to be trimming it anyway. So uh, basically just cutting this little rectangle uh, off of here. This is gonna be that little like roller, like dial part. So I, I, I cut that to size and then I roughly draw um, a cir half circle on there. Uh, now this is some one millimeter foam, two millimeter works fine. And uh, I'm just going through and cutting these little circles out. And then uh, with some five millimeter, I'm going through and I'm cutting um, some slightly smaller circles out. These will be like the indicator um, lights on the bottom. And then on this handle here, I use my blade and I just do some score cutting. Um, you see me do this a lot. It's uh, you, you cut into the foam, you don't cut all the way through the foam. And then when you heat it up, it, uh, it expands those gaps and gives you nice panel lines. Using some one millimeter or two millimeter foam, doesn't matter which, uh, I go through and I'm adding this little trim detail piece to the uh, edge of the grip. Now doing the same thing, adding a score cut to the bottom of the faz wrench. The bottom is a separate color separated by a uh, seam line, so that's what I'm doing. Now using my Dremel, I'll go through and make sure that that half circle is completely circled and smooth. And then just kind of roughly go through and I sand everything, make sure everything is uh, even and flat. And make sure these uh, finger holds are, are pretty nicely uh, smoothed out. And I go through and I round the corners out, all the corners are rounded. So just kind of do that quickly. Then I can glue the handle in place. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue to the back first. And uh, make sure when you glue that in place, you have a gap on the front and the back. Now on that half circle, I'll go through and score cut it. The whole top gets uh, these thin score cuts to give it this textured uh, dial look. And then after that, you can go through here and add a little bit of super glue to the bottom. And I'm gonna stick that in place here. These little indicator light uh, panels get glued on first. Make sure that they are lined up. And then the uh, five millimeter little top parts, they get glued on in the dead center of those. And uh, yeah, so that's supposed to look like a little LED, like a big LED in a uh, metal housing. So that's what that kind of replicates there. Then I go through with my heat gun, uh, open up all those score cuts that we did on everything. And give everything else a quick pass just to seal the foam. Now I took this little copper pipe I had and I um, sanded the inside of it 
so that I can use it as like a little uh, cutting tool. So I cut out all these little circles with it. And these are going to be all of the other um, little LEDs on the top. There are three green and two red. So uh, I dab a little bit of super glue on the top of my lid here. And um, then I can kind of go through with my tweezers and um, get a little bit of glue on that. And then I can uh, stick them in place a little bit easier. Then using the Sharpie, I draw out here where it says Fazbear. Just making sure that it's where I want it and it fits good. Also using the Sharpie, I go through and I mark out these little speaker uh, holes. And so I'll go through here and I draw those. Then I use this a bit on my Dremel. And you just go through and basically just drill these out. Drill all these little holes out. So... I just kind of went slow, made sure everything was lining up good. Now this is a little piece of uh, tubing that I bought at Hobby Lobby. I forget what this stuff is actually for. But uh, so I mark three inches and I leave a little bit extra. Uh, obviously the extra is where it's going to get glued inside. But these are going to be the antennas. So I marked on there where those need to go and then I just use a little bit of force and just kind of push these guys in and then just putting a little bit of super glue on here flicking off the extra so I don't get like a big build up on the top and then I put those in place and that is it for the construction of the Faz Wrench now we can move on to painting so I'm using some Mod Podge here this is Mod Podge with a little bit of black acrylic in it and just go through and I put like five or six coats of this Mod Podge on here. Now using a little bit of ultra matte white, I go through and I paint this whole thing white. Um, if you bought like orange paint that you liked, uh, this would be the time to spray it. But since I was using um, my own mix of acrylic, if you paint it white first, you have a good light base coat so that that way the orange will look good on top of and you don't have to put so many coats um, if I were to use like gray primer like I usually do it would it, uh, the color would be so dark and I'd, I'd have to paint like a ton of layers of orange so use some white primer it saves you a lot of time and um, I've kind of been using white white uh, base coats uh, a lot more lately too just to like save myself a lot of time and energy so yeah that's my little tip um, most people know that uh, I know that but I usually use what's on hand and sometimes that ends up uh, making a project take longer than it should because you're using the materials that you have on hand and um, that's fine uh, we all do it I've done it numerous times but if you do it like you're supposed to do it it'll be a lot quicker and that's kind of the key is that uh, like I said in the beginning this is a project you can knock out in on a Saturday um, and it's pretty fun if you're a Five Nights at Freddy fan it's kind of like a cool little like uh, a thing to have at least I think anyway it's one of those things where like um, if you're a fan you know what it is and if you're not, then you don't. And I kind of like that. So, anyways, going through here with some lime green and painting these LEDs. The big one and these three small ones get this lime color. The big one on the bottom gets red. 
and also those two on top get red. And also while I was talking, um, you saw me paint that Faz Bear. And uh, all I did is I took the orange from the the actual um, main orange color that I mixed up and I just added a little bit of brown to it just to kind of darken that same color up. And that is the color I used for the Faz Bear lettering. Now I'm going through here with some like tannish color and I do a base coat on here. I think I end up adding a little bit of brown to this later to kind of darken it up a little bit. But this is what I did right now. Um, in fact, this color would be fine if you went through and like weathered this if you really wanted to like weather it and make it look old. It's kind of funny to me now thinking about like um, I always weather everything and I, I didn't weather this. so It's kind of funny. Now I use a little bit of brown for the side circle here. There's this little um, panel line. I didn't. Uh, I don't think I showed it, but this get, it gets a little um, score cut like everything else in this little half circle here. So it just kind of separates these two parts. Now I can go through with some black paint everything that needs to be black black the handle is all black so I just really gotta kind of go through slow I do my edges first it's just like painting a wall um, well I guess a lot of people do it differently but um, when I paint like a wall I always do like the edging first I always do like the ceiling and wall edging you know all that stuff first then I can kind of go through and just brush a bigger area on I like doing it that way that way I'm not worried about um, getting close to the uh, paint that is already painted especially with black if you were to get a little bit of black on the orange it would take you forever to cover the black paint with orange it would take you forever to cover your mistake so try to avoid that at all costs so then the uh, screen gets a little bit of paint too then the antennas also get painted black All right, now we can move on to the fun part, the actual cool like display, um, like detail piece of this is the lightning bolt, the Freddy lightning bolt. Um, using some red first here, just going through and doing the trim. I drew this on with pencil first. I'm not freehanding this, so um, I wouldn't want to freehand this. So I drew it with pencil lightly and then I just make sure that I paint it covers the pencil so I, I paint it first here the lines and then I go back through and thicken them up just a smidge while I'm waiting for that red to dry I go through with some silver and I paint these uh, metal uh, parts of the LED lights, just these little um, uh, grommets basically, they just like hold the LED in. Then I go through with some of this uh, light blue and I just kind of go through and I paint the inside of the lightning bolt. And other than that, uh, this is pretty much it for the build. Um, this last bit here on the lightning bolt is the entire process that I took to make this Faz wrench from Five Nights at Freddy 
uh, ruin DLC. Uh, I really hope you guys like the video. I hope you make one for yourself or one for a Five Nights at Freddy fan in your life. And um, if you do, send me a picture on my Instagram or Facebook. And um, I love seeing you guys make stuff and using my patterns. And it's just really cool. So uh, if you like the video, be sure to like it and send it and share it with, with, uh, with your friends. So that is it. I'll see you guys next week when I make something cool.